Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we have an AM4 board again, this time an MSI B450M Pro VDH DH Max. And as you can see, this is the model number, this is MS7A38 version 8.0. This is going to be very important because this thing came to me for no boot. And this board has yet again been physically damaged while someone was trying to get a GPU out probably won't be able to see it but right there is some physical damage and we're going to go under the microscope now together so I will be able to show you it better and now as you can see this is our area that is physically damaged to the left we have our BIOS chip to the right we have a buck converter this is for CPU 1.8 volts I think this is not vCore this is an assi assisting voltage um, and as you can see, there's a resistor missing. How do I know that it is, a, it is a resistor? I looked up the board view for this and found out that this is a resistor for the feedback circuit for this chip. So next thing what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I find my board views most of the time. And then we're going to have a look into the board view and we're going to find the value for this very resistor that is there. And right now you can see my browser. And what I do is I type in the the board number that I've showed you before of the board. In this case, it is MS7A38. Then we have revision 8.0, what we need. And then I type board view behind that. And uh, one thing that you can already see, there's a site where you can download it. This is a Russian site. There's another one, repair lab, where it's also paid. But I found this this board view I found on Batcaps forum as you can see right here. There's our MSI B450M Pro VHD Max MS 7A38 8.0 schematic. And as you can see, there's a schematic that someone put down right there. And now we have our board view as you can see. This is the board and we go near the PCIe slot which is right here. This is the buck converter I was talking about. This is the BIOS chip. And as you can see, we have multiple components here. And the components in question was this one does, that was knocked off. This is R1493. This has a value of 487 ohms. This is a very specific value because this resistor and this resistor and maybe even this resistor, one of these, are forming the feedback circuitry. Probably these two resistors are forming the feedback circuitry for this buck converter. Buck converter w works as follows. It takes um, a higher voltage and um, depending on the feedback voltage, steps it down to a different voltage. And the value of the two of the resistor divider that is put in here determines the value what the output voltage is. So if one of these values would be different we wouldn't have 1.8 volt on the output of this chip but we could have two volts or one volt depending on how we, we vary which of the resistors so we need to find a resistor that gets as close as possible to 487 ohms as you already probably know this is not a standard value so we need to find a workaround how we going to have a resistance value that is close to the 487 ohms. And what you could do now is go to AliExpress or any site like DigiKey and order up a 487 ohm resistor, which would probably be one of the best choices, but that first would be expensive, second would take a long time, and third you will probably never going to use that resistor ever again. So what I'm going to do in this case is I have my assortment of SMD resistors here and the closest value that I have is 470 ohms. These are SMD resistors with 470 ohms and now the problem is we are missing about 17 ohms. So what I do is I will take a 15 ohm resistor and put them in series. This will give us approximately 485 ohms, which is not the exact value that we need, but it is very close. 
The big challenge here is going to be that the place where the resistor should be sitting in is not meant to take two resistors. There's supposed to be a single 04 or 2 resistor in there. As you can see when we flip to our microscope, which would be this camera right here. If we go to the to the place, as you can see, there's a there's a spot for only a single resistor. So our challenge will be to put a resistor into here. In the bottom there as you can see instead of putting one resistor there we need to be able to put two resistors in series into there in order to get this feedback circuitry back to its running condition and this i won't do under live commentary i will do this by myself and probably going to show you the footage of it and i will talk over that and now one more quick thing. This is the chip that we have at hand. This is an MP2329. This is a buck converter synchronous uh, from 24 volts maximum input voltage and 6.5 amps. As you can see, um, we have the pin out here and the important pin for us is pin 10. This is feedback. And as you can see, feedback and external resistor divider from the output to ground tap to feedback sets the output voltage place the resistor divisor as close to feedback as possible avoid wires on the uh, feedback traces and keep the v sense trace away, away from the sv node sv node is the output wires should also be avoided on the v send trace and as you can see this is the setting the output voltage without an external ramp there are two different ways one is this schematic, one is this schematic. The schematic that we have is this right one because we have three different resistors connected to our feedback pin. As you can see when we switch to the board view right here. In the board view, you can see pin 10 is our feedback pin. It's connected to three different resistors. One of them is connected to ground, which is this one. One of them is connected to the face. And um, if we go back to data sheet, you can see some examples of how they would set resistors. As you can see, they would set, set one in the resistor divided to 40.2 kilo ohms and then adjust the second one, the second resistor. And depending on what resistance values you set, you get these output voltages. And not only these ones, but you can follow either this formula or this formula, formula depending on the topology you, you, you use to set different output voltages because we get 1.8 volts as an output voltage while using this formula. I would actually calculate it for you right now, but uh, I'm not too sure what VREF is act, uh, at the moment because I haven't seen, I haven't looked at what the input voltage is for this chip, but it, it, it really is that easy that you just put in everything that you need and you um, should get the V out that you need. And now we are back. After struggling a lot to solder this in, we now have two resistors, one 417 and one 15 ohm resistor in series. As you can see, I made a small little mistake I had the hot air too close to the PCIe slot and it got a little bit melted. But this isn't going to be a problem for the functionality, but it doesn't look very professional. Oh, but it happens. So what we are now going to do is we are going to measure from there to there and hope we get as close as possible to the 487 ohms that we need. And now I'm trying to get everything in one shot. So you can see in the bottom right of your screen, you have the resistors where I'm going to go with my probes. And you see in the top, you, right here, you see my multimeter. So let's see. Four hundred and sixty-four. We are about 20 ohms short. This has to do with the resistors that I use. I have a delta of like 5%. So let's see for the individual resistors. As a reminder, this should have been 15 ohms. And this is almost spot on 15. And this should have been 470. And it's 450. Yep. 
This resistor is about 20 ohms out. This is quite a lot. Um, I gotta say, I'm not satisfied with that. I'm going to take out some of the resistors that I still have for 470 ohms. And I will see if I have any that are closer to the spec that I need. And as much as it hurts me, I probably have to take off this contraption again and put another resistor in. Uh, I'm probably not going to film it. I'm probably just going to show you the results and I will see you then. So I have now done a complete once over and let's see. We get 475. So welcome back. This job has completely gone off the rails. I imagine this to be way easier because you would expect, yeah, there's only a single resistor that I'm missing. How how uh, how hard can it be? But as you can see, it can be very very hard. I think I've redone this about three or four times with different resistor values, and my final iteration that you can see right here even includes three resistors. And for all of this. Now let's have a look at the multimeter. If I now try to probe our two places, let's see, we get 488 ohms, 89, depending on how good my contact is, 88. So we're one ohm off and I'm very happy about that. So I have tried multiple different combinations of resistors to get as close as possible and my the resistors that I use have sadly a very big tolerance so it was very hard because the nominals didn't match up at the end what I ended up using were three different resistors with one now I'm going to show you under the microscope 270 ohms 220 ohms and for the last one 15 ohms and if you would just calculate these values you would get way higher you get 490 with these two and then you get 505 if you add the 15 ohm resistor but all of these resistors that i have seem to go low every time i uh, have a tolerance that is lower than the actual value and yeah how i have connected them these are connected in a way you have this pad with one then you have a wire going to the next one which is this one as you can see the wire is attached right there and this one is just bridged by solder so this was would be where the original one resistor is but now we have this chain of three re resistors in series this is madness this is not a good fix this looks awful but probably no one is ever going to notice what i've done there and this I'm pretty sure this will work, but I'm not proud of this work because it would have been way better to just have the right resistor in here, just one, a single one, use some hot air and be, would be done with it, but sometimes it doesn't turn out like that. So there's a single left thing left for us to do right here is we're going to build this up right now and we're going to measure the voltage that is coming out of this buck buck converter and I'm pretty sure that this board will turn on and will work. And now we're going to connect our clamp to the terminal and see our voltage. We have 90 milliamps, looks very healthy for standby. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the power on button together and I'm going to get my multimeter ready to see what voltage we will have on that coil. So let's put my multimeter there. We want to measure the output voltage of this coil right there. We have an APU right here. We have our usual four sticks of RAM. We have an NVMe connection or an NVMe SSD. And let's see, I'm going to turn this on. The consumption looks very healthy. You have an LED, LED debug LEDs here. First one is CPU, then you have RAM, then VGA, and then you have uh, for the last one you have boot and let's see now we're going to go on to this coil 
and this coil shows about 1.786 volts which you can't see anymore because of our post screen uh, let's see if I put you right there you can see it in the crack in between there let's probe this again 1.786 that is close enough to 1.8 volts and let's see now and we have a bio screen or not the bio screen but boot and now we're booting into windows that looks very good this has an apu attached to it i'm now going to do my usual stress tests when i'm done with my stress tests i'm going to come back to you because the, the rail that we were working on was a major rail for the cpu so if i've tested that then I can conclude this video and I will see you then. And now we have two passes of Linpack Extreme. Nothing out of the ordinary, it just passed. And I think this board is fixed now. There's nothing else wrong with this because we found the exact problem. We found what was wrong with it. I have no, no reason to believe that the SATA isn't working or USB or PCIe. I'm going to test a few things here and there, but I'm going to do that off screen. Um, I wanted to clarify, I knew exactly where we had to look because the previous owner was uh, very honest and instantly told me that um, there was physical damage on that p spot on the PCIe. Yet again, someone who tried to open up the PCIe latch with the screwdriver and knocked off a resistor. And so, thank you very much for watching. I knew this was quite the botch job and this could have been a lot prettier if I just had a single resistor instead of those three resistors that I now put in place. But it does work. It is a fix. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe uh, to my channel. Hopefully to see you in the next video so you don't miss any of my content anymore. And thank you very much for watching and goodbye.